phone. Man, this phone got me in all this. I'm pissed because, like, my girlfriend's on an escort website. Like, that's up. What girlfriend? Y'all, Tyree takes his denial to another level this episode. Yeah, you're delusional. <laughs> He's still having a hard time accepting that Carmella is not real. He's coming up with all the theories. I still have that hope in my heart. But I was also maybe thinking, like, what if, like, Carmella was, like, in prison or something? But what about Christian, though? He pretended to be her. He could be her pimp. So Carmella being a prostitute with a pimp or being in prison with a husband is better than her being a catfish? This is crazy. As you can see, I'm letting his sister say what I really want to say. <laughs> Let's get into it. Hey, 90 Day Fans fam, it's Melicia. I hope you are doing well out there. Ooh, this week, the sisters of the 90 Day cast members who are quite frankly tripping had to step in and try to talk some sense into their siblings. Did it work? No. But let's take a look at their attempts. Starting off with Jasmine's little sister, Liz, who, by the way, I would love to know her age. She looks so young, and Jasmine is just dumping all this drama on her. <laughs> I'm sure she is an adult. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but it looks odd. After the disastrous conversation with, you know, I am super sad. This episode picks up after Jasmine called off her engagement to Gino because he asked her how she feels about signing a prenup. Oh, if there a is a prenup, I'm not gonna marry you. And now, while she's at dinner with her sis, she's regretting her actions toward Gino, which is the typical cycle we see Jasmine and Gino go through. Jasmine explodes on Gino. They say the worst possible things to each other. I get along even with my exes better than I do with you. He doesn't have sex oh, problems yeah, like you do. Exactly. You couldn't. You're the worst sexual person in the world. And then, after the dust settles, they talk about how they don't want to lose each other. Jasmine tells her sister she feels abandoned by Gino because him bringing up a prenup brings up the past trauma she has from her ex leaving her with nothing. And once Jasmine starts to do this dramatic cry that she's been doing for the last three episodes, I mean full-on ugly cry, leaning in to the ugliness of the cry. <laughs> Once she starts, you see her sister trying to hold back her reaction. <laughs> it looks like she wanted to laugh or at least crack a smile. And I don't blame her. If I was Jasmine's sister, I don't know if I could keep a straight face either. Her sister goes on to tell her that she should leave Gino and be with someone who can give her the love she deserves. Which has me thinking, Lil Sis might be a little unaware of how Jasmine behaves in this relationship. I'm not saying Jasmine doesn't deserve good love. We all do. But in my opinion, if she wants a better lover, she's gonna have to work on becoming a better lover, AKA, Work on loving herself. It's a journey inside. No lo quiero dejar, Liz. No es tan fácil. O sea, el amor no es un botón que yo primo y simplemente ya no voy a querer. Ayer. Pero te está haciendo Yo lo daño. quiero, te pero yo lo amo. Pero ¿de qué te sirve que lo ames si te está haciendo todo este daño? That's a good question, Liz. She basically said, why are you in this relationship if it's so painful? Jasmine couldn't answer that. My thought is, for some reason, she likes the pain. But I need chaos, I need passion, I need someone that is gonna give me that fire, you know? Jasmine goes on to tell the camera that she has a fear of rejection, like many of us. And then she says she needs Gino to fight for her as she cries about not wanting to lose him. No quiero perder a Gino. No, no sé qué decirte. Her sister is like, girl, you are draining me. Yo creo que es mi culpa porque yo siempre los trato mal. <laughs> Look at her sister's face. Pero los trato mal. And then she has to straighten up. Pues acepto el contrato y le digo ¡Ah, que está bien, que lo, que lo voy a firmar porque no lo quiero perder. I'm not trying to dismiss Jasmine's pain, but she could put that dramatic energy to good use on somebody's stage. 
What does she want her little sister to do with all of this? Just be a listening ear? Her sister say, calm down, drink some water, which is a nice way of saying, girl, pull it together. Yo quiero casarme con él, yo quiero estar con él. I told y'all, Jasmine gives herself a headache from all this hard crying. Fast forward, her storyline with Gino this week wraps up with Gino telling her he's taking the prenup off the table. And with a super happy Jasmine, then asking Gino to get a wheel. Would you consider having a wheel at this moment? Before they get married. To make sure she's taken care of if anything happens. We're like a few months away from being married, and you're worried about me dying? Jasmine says she wants to be in the will so she can feel like Gino will always look after her. <laughs> now, I get wanting a sense of security, but let's not act like her request doesn't sound a little sketchy. Think about if somebody asked you to do that before you got married. For one, I would say, we need to get this relationship to a better place before you think you are obligated to any of my money. And two, if something happens to Gina before they get married, she can stay in Panama. Or if she's in America and something happens before they get married, she can go back to Panama. All right, let's move on from Jasmine, the actress, and get into Tyrae, the screenwriter. Sweet Tyrae is creating stories on the fly and believing them. I don't know how the last four years could be a lie. All right, starting from the top, Tyrae meets up with his sister, Lashanti, who tells him she has some new information about Catfish Carmella. And as she prepares to tell him, Tyrae admits to the camera that even after the producers told him he was being catfished by a man named Christian, he's still having a hard time accepting it. So, I don't know if he thinks the producers are lying, playing a joke on him, or what. So you said she hasn't um, responded to the Snapchats, right? Yeah, she hasn't responded at all. She just opened up the messages maybe like two days ago. Um, she's looking at them because, you know, that's confirmation that she's seen them. And Even honestly, though that's not her, though, like you want him to respond? His sister is so gentle because some of us would have cut him off earlier and said he. Okay, it's a he, not a she. That's the thing that I still kind of think that it might be her. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I do. I still have that hope in my heart. But I was also maybe thinking, like, what if, like, Carmela was, like, in prison or something? Yeah, the idea of her has been locked up in your head and it's time to release her. It's like he'll accept anything other than the fact that she's not real. And I can imagine how big of a letdown it is to accept that who he thought he was in love with for four years doesn't exist. It is something worth grieving over, but the quicker he accepts it, the sooner he can start to feel better about it. But I was also maybe thinking like, what if like Carmela was like in prison or something? <laughs> and... Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it sounds crazy. It does. I'm like... sorry, I don't wanna laugh, but. Seriously, I really want to shake you just to knock some sense into your head. But she's not in prison. No, let me explain though, because like you know how when people are in prison and they need somebody to like talk to. The imagination, man, it's true when they say it can be a great servant. You can be creative. You can invent things. It's a wonderful tool, but it is a terrible master. You cannot believe everything you think. I'm gonna repeat it again, you cannot believe everything you think. If I was to believe everything that popped up in this head, whew, sometimes I think maybe I should be a horror film writer because of the things my imagination conjures up. Worst case scenarios. Maybe Tyre needs to write a love story about him and Carmela if she was actually real and in jail. Hey, the creativity is already there. He can use his imagination for good and allow it to make him some money instead of it using him. You know how when people are in prison and they need somebody to like talk to because they're like locked up? Like a pen pal? Yeah, so maybe 
this is what happened. She got released, and then now she's like with her husband or something. I'm sorry, but yeah, that is not logical. That's still like a possibility, though. Like, At all. Maybe she got out and maybe her husband found out or something. <laughs> yeah, you're delusional. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at Tyree. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for laughing because he's so serious. He said it's a possibility. That's still like a possibility, though. Like. But there are infinite possibilities, Tyree. And remember, he's never let his family in on his business before. So this is the first time his sister is getting to know him in this way. I am shocked that Tyree is in such denial right now. And it's killing me to watch him believe and hold on to just a little bit of hope that this could be real. Tyree's sister finally sits him down to tell him what she found out about Catfish Carmella. Yeah, I was just doing my own research. Oh, he looks so nervous. Yeah, I was just doing my own research of the pictures that you sent me, and I finally found something. What'd you find? I could pull it up. Oh my God. This is an escort page. <sighs> Lashanti shows Tyree Carmella's pictures on the escort profile she came across. And what's even more shocking is that on the page, she worked in various cities in California. One city only 30 minutes away from where Tyree lives. Are you okay? The worst part is like, uh, oh, man. This phone got me in all this Tyree, the phone didn't do anything. You have to accept that your actions played a part in this dragging out for so long. He flew from California to Barbados in the middle of the pandemic, and Carmela didn't show up. And he still chose to continue this relationship with her after that. I'm pissed because, like, my girlfriend's on an escort website. Like, that's <laughs> up. I don't even know what to say. All of this because he doesn't want to accept reality. I don't want to judge anybody, but at the same time, it's like, that's something you kind of want to tell your partner that you're escort or whatever. Actually, this isn't funny. <laughs> it is, but it isn't. Because he's serious. Where are the producers who told him Carmela is a catfish? They're gonna sit there and let him talk to the camera about her as if she's real? Who am I kidding? <laughs> They're probably in the back saying, this is great. They live in Bakersfield or Stockton. Stockton is like right down the street. Like you're there 30 minutes away. Like, like what the f <laughs> If you really were that close, why haven't we met yet? After four years of having a supposed relationship and then you're saying you love me and I say I love you. Y'all know, I like to psychoanalyze people and try to understand how their mind works and how they process things. That being said, I'm still trying to wrap my head around why he's okay believing that story as if it's better than Carmela being a catfish. They both are pretty bad situations. But I guess in one, there's a possibility for the love they share to be real. I know Tyree shared he doesn't have much experience with women. He's a 33-year-old virgin. But I don't think this is just an experience issue. I'm thinking it's much deeper than that. I'm not a professional, but I'm thinking maybe the childhood trauma he experienced, which is the root cause for most of our issues as adults, has something to do with him having a hard time accepting reality. Maybe he's had to lie to himself in the past to be able to digest hard truths. His father was murdered when he was a child. He dealt with homelessness at a young age. And I know you may say, well, that should help him accept reality more. But the truth is, we all respond to trauma differently. <sighs> Y'all, I don't know what's going on with Tyree. I'm just trying to come up with something to make it make sense. It's like a dagger to my heart. Like, I didn't want to show you, like, I just already knew that it was going to be 
No, I, yeah. I appreciate you showing me, though, like, and being honest about it with me, because if that's not the kind of girl I want to be with, like, at all, like, and now, like, what am I going to tell mom? I was dating an escort who said she was living in Barbados who happened to live in Bakersfield. No, you tell her you got catfished. Speaking of his mom, I would love to know what she thinks about all of this. But what about Christian, though? His sister is looking like, bro, you can't be serious. He pretended to be her. It's like he's choosing to only remember and accept what he wants and forget the truth that was told to him. But what about Christian, though? He pretended to be her. He could be her pimp. Alicia, we gotta come back and finish the show. Five minutes later. I have nothing to say. It's just crazy. It's hard to watch him cling to some hope for her to be real, because all the signs are right there that he was catfished. But he's too in denial for me, and I want him to accept it for what it is and not try to make some more excuses. But I don't know how else to help Tyre. I really don't. When I spoke to Tyre, he told me Carmela's looks had nothing to do with why he entertained her for so long. It was never about anyone's looks or anything like that. We had a deeper connection than, than just the, the physical aspect of it. But it's hard to believe that he did not fall in love with those pictures because this deeper connection goes out the window when you learn that she isn't who she said she is. And let him tell it, she's now a prostitute or in prison. At this point, that deep connection is null and void because either way, it wasn't real. But no, he is seemingly holding on to those pictures wherever they pop up for dear life. Tyre calls the number on the escort profile and no one answers. So he ends up sending a text. I just put, hey, I seen your ad and you look extremely familiar. I wanted to know if we could have a chat, if you're available. I'm extremely lost and confused because I don't know, you know what to believe. I wanted to find more information about her, but obviously this information isn't what I wanted to hear. I don't know what to do, but I desperately want to connect with her and get the whole truth. Well, hopefully he'll accept it. I can't wait to see this ending Tyre teased play out. It's gonna be a pretty shocking ending, so <laughs> hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> this episode was something else. All right, next week, Jasmine calls her ex, Dane, and gives him a little bit too much information. Hi, baby. Hey, it's good to see you. What's been happening? It's so embarrassing, but he doesn't want to have sex with me. I know. And I think you deserve someone like really incredible. But is Jasmine going to be nice to this incredible person? That's the question. All right, 90 Day Fans fam, thanks for hanging with me. Make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.